Lesson 10.2c using box plots to make inferences. To go over again what we learned in the last video, an inference, that's the process of finding out by reasoning. It's a conclusion. In a sentence, my inference of the dog's barking was that someone was at the door. So that's the conclusion I came to by reasoning. In sixth grade math lesson 16.3a, we learned to make and interpret box plots, which may also be called box and whisker plots. It's a graph that shows how data are distributed by using the median, quartiles, least value, and greatest value. The lower quartile is the median of the lower half. The upper quartile is the median of the upper half. Now, it's been quite a while since we did Lesson 16.3a back in sixth grade, so we're going to do a real quick review of these quartiles and the median and everything. Once we've got our memory back, we'll do some qualitative inferences. The lower quartile, median, and upper quartile divide the data set into four sections that each contain the same amount of data values. In this graph, each section contains five data values. We've got it split into four different sections. The median splits it in half, and then the lower quartile splits the lower half in half, and the upper quartile splits the upper half in half. We can think of a quartile as one-fourth, or one-quarter of the data values. So here our data values are some daily high temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit. We've got our number line, and it's labeled da daily high temperatures degrees Fahrenheit. And we've got our temperatures, and you can see they're skip counting by twos. And we've got our least value, which is 75, and our greatest value is 94. We order the data values from least to greatest and we draw a box plot and a number line that includes all the data values. We draw dots above the least value, the lower quartile, the median, the upper quartile, and the greatest values. Then we draw segments to connect them. Here's the whiskers on each side, and we draw segments here, forming a box with whiskers. The qualitative inferences we get from the data is the daily high temperature averaged around 84 degrees, and the daily high temperature ranged between 75 degrees and 94 degrees. And there's other qualitative inferences we can make from this box plot. We can analyze box plots to make inferences about a population of students surveyed for the number of pets owned. So here's the number of pets owned from the results of the survey. The lower and upper quartiles can be calculated by finding the medians of each half. So the median is going to be 3. We add up all of these and divide it by 8 because there's 8 data values and we got a 3. That's the median. Now, for the lower quartile, we find the average of 1 and 2, which is 1 and 5 tenths, so that is our lower quartile. And for the upper quartile, it's going to be an average of 4 and 5, which is 4.5. So we have the number of pets owned, the data values, in order from least to greatest. We draw vertical lines going through the plotted points for the lower quartile, the median, and upper quartile. So we've got these vertical lines going through these three, and we've got our greatest and least above the number line. Now we draw line segments connecting the least point to the lower quartile, and the greatest to the upper quartile. Finally, we draw segments to make a box from the lower to upper quartiles. Here we have our box and whisker plot. Now for the qualitative inferences. 
We have our box and whisker plot of the number of pets owned from the survey. The most likely number of pets is three. That's the middle number, the median. Half the students have between zero and three pets. We can see that this is half. We can also see that this is half. Almost all of the students have a pet. We can say the students have at least one pet, most of the students. Not all, because someone does have zero, but most of the students have at least one pet. It's important to order the data values from least to greatest, so we know the least and greatest values for the ends of the whiskers. This will also help us to divide the data into quarters based on the position of the data values along our number line. Okay, we're finished with 10.2c. We're going to move on to the last part of the lesson, using proportions to make inferences. Make sure that you saw 10.2a before you watch 10.2d, because that's going to help you with the proportional reasoning. If you're having trouble remembering this from last year, from sixth grade, or if you didn't learn this in sixth grade, I'm going to have a link to the 16.3 lessons that taught about box plots and interquartile ranges and all of that stuff in the description of this video. Have a wonderful day, as always, and join me for the last part of the lesson. Bye.